I'm going to do a series of videos here to show you the steps of programming the type of the ice cream store version 2 which is similar to your assignment 3. So what I've done, I've posted on the site already a copy of a completed version of the program and I thought I'd start by showing you how it works. So you can see it's got option buttons for the flavor, check boxes for the toppings, an informative message, a checkbox for the spoon, and a button to click to place the order. So if I say two scoops of chocolate with hot fudge and whipped cream and a spoon and place my order, then it's saying two scoops of chocolate ice cream topped with hot fudge and whipped cream. Tells me the cost of my sundae, the tip, the souvenir spoon, and the total. If I don't choose any of these things, then they don't get mentioned. Just says two scoops of chocolate ice cream, the cost of the sundae, the tip, and the total. And notice it mentions the flavor here in the message. Okay, so we want to get started enhancing our current version to have all those features. And here I've written down some major program steps to do in order to accomplish that. Now the first one is to complete the user form uh, put the captions on the check boxes and the option buttons. Make the program do that and the user form initialize procedure. That's actually a pretty good chunk of work uh, and a good place to start. Now I'm going to do as much for it, of it as I can for you in this video. Uh, whatever I leave on then I'll do a representative amount and then you can see the rest in the posted uh, version. Okay, so let's open this up. And here you see the more rudimentary version, version 1, that we're starting with. So all I can do is choose my number of scoops and it tells me the scoops, the cost, the tip, and the total. Alright, so let's go over to the code. Okay, Visual Basic. And um, I'm going to open my object. And what I'd like to do, let's get it so we can see the whole thing here. Uh, we may probably need to make it a little longer. So let's go ahead and do that move this button down and I'm going to want this label to be after everything about the food and now what I need to fill in here are the option buttons and the check boxes so to do that let's get my toolbox here um, I'm going to start with a frame so I'll create a frame here well first of all let's think about the frame its name is frame 1. I'm not going to have the program change it, so I won't change the name. But it does have a caption, and I can take advantage of that to give the user some instructions. So I'm going to say, choose a flavor. And that way I can avoid having to have a label. All right, let's choose some option buttons. So I'll put one in here. And I'm going to make the caption a little bit longer here because I'm going to be putting the price and so on. If you do a caption and the whole thing doesn't show up, it's probably too short. So you can try making it longer to see if that'll help. All right, and I'm going to copy this and then I'll just paste. And I think I need this a little longer. I'll paste again. Now it puts it right on top. So let's move it down. Okay, and there we have our three option buttons. Now. I am going to play with these uh, in the program, so I need to give them names, first of all. So my three flavors are vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. So let's call this one Opt Vanilla, and we'll make its caption say Vanilla. Now, of course, I'm going to have the program add the price to the caption and stuff. This will be written over, but I want it there while I'm doing the design so I can kind of see my overall layout. So this one is OPT uh, chocolate, and I want the caption to say chocolate for now. And the third one is OPT strawberry, and I'll have the caption say strawberry. All right, so that gives me those. Let's drag this a little further down. Now I want another frame. 
for my flavors, for my toppings. Let's get that here. I think I still need, whoops, go back. I think I still need a little more room. Let's pull this down a little more. Make this guy a little wider. There. And uh, let's pick out some check boxes. So, okay, here's a good check box. So I'm going to put three of them. So I'll copy and paste and paste. Okay, and let's get those guys here. They're jammed in a little bit. You can fiddle around till it looks nice. The thing I want to do though is stretch these out so I've got enough room for all the information I want to put in there. Okay, they are kind of on top of each other. Let's see if we can move this guy up a little. So again, you, you need to fiddle with this. I probably need to just make everything a little bigger. There we go. Now I've got room. Okay. So let's do some naming. Uh, remember for check boxes it starts with CHK. So this is check. This is for whipped cream, so I'll call it check cream. And I'll make the temporary caption say cream. Flipped. This one's for hot fudge, so I'll call it CHK fudge and hot fudge. And the last one is for sprinkles, so let's call it CHK sprinkles and the caption for now will say sprinkles. All right, and I need one more checkbox. So let's move this guy. Um, so this is going to be a comment about the 15% tip on the food. So I want to put the checkbox for the souvenir spoon after it. So let's put it right here. And this is going to be CHK spoon. And temporarily I'll make it say souvenir I didn't spell that right, but there we go. And I think that's all I need. Of course, I can come back and add things later. There's no like one time. Uh, and then you have to be done. So, okay, let's go on over to the code. So I'll go view the code. Now, notice what happened. I mistakenly clicked on that info label. And it set up a place for me to put code for the event of clicking for um, clicking on the label. Well, I don't want code for that, so I'm just going to get rid of it. And you can always do that. So if you see those kind of things showing up, that's what happened. And just erase them. So, okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is set up some constants. Um, I no longer have a single scoop price. Instead, I'm going to have a price for each flavor. So we're going to have a vanilla price. Add 75 cents. A chocolate price. As double equals a dollar and a strawberry price as strawberry price as double equals one point two and then, of course, I also have um, prices for my other things. So, for example, I have constant um, the price for the whipped cream. So let's call it cream price as double is, um, I think it's 15 cents 
uh, a fudge price. as double and that'll be um, 40 cents and a sprinkles price as double equals 5 cents and we have a spoon price and that is equal to four dollars. Now I could have put these in one at a time and done done it in a different order. It doesn't matter because I have my plan in mind. I'm going to do these all at once. If you look at my final version, I also have comments on these um, saying what cat what each of these categories is. Okay, so here's my user form. This should have a comment. You'll see it in my good version. And what I want to do in here is set up the labels of all those buttons and boxes to say the proper thing in terms of the price of the item. So let's just do a couple. Uh, at some point I'm going to run out of time, but I'll do as many as I can here. So for example, for OPT, whoops, OPT Vanilla. Dot, uh, caption is, um, well, I want to say how much it is, so that'll be, first of all, the flavor, space, so they're not jammed together, ampersand, don't forget that, then I want the price, so format, currency, well, it'll fix this for me, currency, um, I want the vanilla price, Now, what if I did forget then per scoop? So, see what I did? I left out my ampersand. So, when I go to another line, it's giving me an error. This is the end of the statement. This is hanging off it because there's nothing connecting things up. If I go ahead and put the ampersand in, everything's fine. Okay. So, what I'll need to do is make a caption like this for the option button for vanilla, the option button for, uh, sorry, for chocolate, for strawberry, and then for each of the check boxes, fix up its caption the same way, uh, the caption for the check box for the spoon. Um, and then I also want to change this label to just talk about the tip. So I'm going to just erase this much. So I'll say tip, this much tip will be added. Uh, to cost. Okay. Now notice I've done away with scoop price. If I keep it like this and try to run it, I'm going to have a problem because down here I'm actually using scoop price. So what I need to do is somehow take care of that. What I'm going to do is down here, I'll do dim. Uh, scoop price is going to be a variable now as double. Let's see if it'll fix it. Isn't that nice? Fix it up for me. Now, of course, it has no value at this point. It hasn't been set. So if I actually run the program at this point, I'm going to get zero. At some times, the program is not going to be consistent. But I try to minimize that and be aware of it and have it in a consistent state as much as I can. So in the next segment, I'll show you how I'm going to take care of that. So in the next segment, I'm going to have filled in these labels and put a comment here and we'll be ready to go with the next phase.